Welcome to another episode of Phil Drills His Lamborghini. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> we're trying to fit seats. I think we mentioned this. I think I mentioned this when I came in um, over Christmas and I sat one of my pole position seats in here. Uh, it's quite a challenge because of the basically the width of the transmission tunnel, the gearbox tunnel here, and the fact that there's a main structural um, chassis rail that sits in exactly the wrong place. So basically you've got the widest point of the gearbox tunnel and the widest point of the seat needing to be in the same place. So the pole position, not really very good. No, you should have bought the real ones in the first place. Yeah, so um, rather than getting Jay to pull an SPG out of my E30, um, or my Porsche, because I like SPGs. Um, he just kindly bought one of his in from home. One of your acquisitions. I've only got one. A cheap acquisition. I've only got one with internet. no cushion. You know, that's my sort of <laughs> that's yeah. my sort of car, right? So yeah, I might as well actually show you what we're looking at because it is obviously an SPG is narrower than a um, pole position. And it's believe it or not, despite my fatness, <laughs> my winter weight, um, I can it's still layers. fit in SPGs. Yeah, it's <laughs> so, clothes. So yeah, we've um, we've done the bit where I sit in here and we try and keep the seat in place as best as possible um, when I come out. We've marked the points where it needs to be. It's got an absolute load of gangster lean on it because that gives me then hopefully enough uh, height to potentially be able to put a helmet on. I think that's optimistic, but as soon yeah. as you're sitting on the floor, there is no more car to exactly, fit in, yeah. so. And this is not a track car. I know it looks like one. I know the internet's gonna give me a load of crap over it. <laughs> This is not my track car. I have a track car. I have a few track, track cars. This one just happens to look like one. <laughs> <laughs> but with, as with all of my cars, I do always end up using them on track at one point or the other. So um, having the ability to put a helmet on is pretty important. So we're just trying to get this sitting actually on the floor and as far over to the gearbox tunnel as possible. And that at this stage currently means that I'm about to drill a hole in the chassis rail. And the idea is that mount through the bucket seat. So drill the threads out of the metal um, insert in the bucket seat and mount through into a boss that we're gonna weld into the chassis rail or onto the chassis rail. We don't actually know 100% yet, but job one is getting something in there and seeing where the seat wiggles into place and then go from there basically. Cool. And we've already marked this with tape. And Tape pen. And pen and small drill. <laughs> yeah, but it is right on the top of the chassis rail, so it's Obviously. not going to be ideal, basically. I'll film you snap the drill bit. Yeah, it is going to snap because it's right on the corner. I'm going to go a little bit lower down and we'll just deal with it. There we go. Is that it? Yeah, so yeah, it's double layered because it's the same as the rest of the stuff that the rest of the steel that the chassis has been built with. Right. Everything that we had to do with um, Craig to rebuild the front end is just literally 20 by 40 box. Did we film that? I can't remember. Yeah, I think that's in one of the early episodes. So yeah, crude stuff. Again, the gearbox tunnel is, I think it's carbon fibre, it's composite, but that frame rail there is just a frame rail, 20 by 40 steel. So. No problem for us to put a box in, a boss in, or you know, a bracket onto it once we've got our angles. We hope. Right then, let's. See, so yeah, I reckon we just drill that to size for an M8 tap, and then. You're just going to tap that for now, are you? Yeah, test? that is not how we're keeping it, but it's just literally to know where we're at, so I can okay. hold the seat in place, and then we'll have to do it properly afterwards. Six point seven, is it, or something? Seven, let's go and yeah. figure it out. There we go then, car's drilled. Yeah, so we're using a, just a long M6 bolt with a little spacer at the moment, just to, again, to reiterate, we're not mounting it with an M6 bolt. No, I just didn't want you to wreck my seat. Yeah, so didn't want to have to drill out Jay's metal part of his uh, SPG here, so we're just gonna see whether we can now line it up and it'll tell us what we need to know. This is gonna be a great fun be exercise, isn't it? Yeah. See roughly where it's supposed to be, and then just essentially Done it wiggle in. it round until it goes in. Yeah, there's not much light in there. People are probably moan. 
It's all right. You're dressed in black now. in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> Watch a, a man in a black cap do something in a very in dirty dark. Lamborghini in the dark. And there's that hole. You are there. I can see you. Oh, serious. No serious. Dugger, dugger time. Nah. <laughs> just gonna, just gonna whiz it in lightly. If it's, if it's in the right place, that is. Yeah. Yeah. That's gonna go. feel lovely on your hip. <laughs> you can't feel it actually. I've got. Nice. That, that's how my uh, they're mounted in my 964. Okay. I basically did kind of the same thing where I created a uh, inner mount that's as far over to tra transmission tunnel as possible and then sort of bolt it in from the inside the seat. So yeah, that is the recipe to making seats fit, but yeah, it's not a lot of fun to do the, the working out. Right, one out of four. Yeah, that's it, that's it now. We can just go driving. Yeah. 211 mile an hour does this car do? You well, can. Before I'm not doing mile. 200 mile an hour in it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's looking fits pretty nicely around here. Obviously the the trim panel that sits over this is gonna to have to be just adapted <laughs> to sink the seat this way. You're not gonna go full on race car and strip it. No. <laughs> Although the more I sit in it and the more you know with my old age and thinking about my safety a little bit more than I used to, I do wonder whether having some kind of roll cage in here. There's no room for one. You'd have to do a centre spine roll cage. So what's that even? So not having the bar here, it basically right. have to come and crisscross here away from your head. So I've been I've been putting some thought into that as well. But that thing, maybe that could be phase what should we call it? Phase ten. Yeah. Next uh, let's get the V ten fixed yeah. before we start that. Yeah, project. yeah, we've got to do and keep the public happy, haven't we? <laughs> um, so next mount. It's oh, quite far away. Are you going down to the floor on this one? <laughs> to no. the original mount? No? No. Uh, well, same? actually, we might be able to because it's just—it's going to be like a right angle bracket that comes up to the. Yeah, yeah, same on this side. Here. Yeah, but I do need to, unfortunately, have a sit in this and probably snap that bolt just to see whether it is in the right place before we go making anything too permanent. Okay, you come back around here. Then. Okay. It'll this will be well gracious. So I'll turn the camera back on. <laughs> Watching me and all of my seventeen layers. Get into, get into a bucket <laughs> seat that barely fits me when I'm when There's I'm. There's no way I'd get in there at the moment, so don't worry about it. <laughs> barely walk. Space. Yeah, I'm not as bad as I was the other day. I've now only got three, no, two hoodies on. Yeah, we've got a heater now. Not that it's on, but we've got one. <laughs> so, right, make sure my arse doesn't come out. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I've got my driving boots on as well. Perfect. <laughs> He's in. <sighs> Breathing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Left to, um, it's inspiration for getting off the biscuits again, isn't it? You know, the, <laughs> the SPG keeps you off the biscuits. <laughs> it does, actually, in all seriousness. I've yeah. thought about that over many years. Used to work quite well having a race suit, but don't do racing now. <laughs> yeah, an expensive race suit definitely stops you from being too fat. That feels pretty damn good. Well, that's positive. And it is almost perfectly in line. Unlike this factory seat. Yeah, which is well offset. Helmet. I Do you want a helmet while you're there? But I mean, there's nowhere, there's, like you're on the floor. So, you know, I can go and get your helmet reckon, if you want. Nah, I reckon. That's better than it was. So yeah, let's call that, let's call that good. Uh, we haven't put the torch now. Well, everything disappears if you put it down, especially in this car. Yeah. Yeah, can you, uh, I think I might put it on the floor down there or something. No? Is it under the seat? Ow. I think it can be because I had no, it in there. It's not under the seat. Oh. No point filming us looking for a torch, is it? <laughs> Ah, after all that, you found the torch. 
after all that, it's right here. Is it in your pocket? No, it was on the floor where you were supposed to look. Uh, I even filmed down there, so everyone on YouTube can be shouting that the torch is right there. Anyway. Do you want to say something that... Doesn't happen. In the history of the world has never, ever happened. Especially when Phil's involved with mountain seats. Seat frames, making seat rails, getting a car, uh, getting a seat to fit in a car properly is probably one of the worst jobs you can ever do. Ask Craig what, what his least favourite jobs are and seat rails. Will I'm, be going, right up there. I'm going roll cages. That's definitely probably top of the list. <laughs> but yeah, this never happens. So this is, this is part of one of our Driftworks E36 BMW bucket seat mounts. This is one side of it. And as you can see here, that bolt hole in the floor of a Lamborghini mounts up. The side of the bucket seat hole lines up. And at the back, well, who cares, but I think. I do, if it just bolts up. Pretty set, yep. You won't be able to see, necessarily see with the camera. Can you see down there? You see bolts, right down there, there's a, one. that will bolt up. And. Well, you know, that will bolt up as well. Five by one twenty wheels, same seat as it, same floor as an E thirty six. Basically, oh, there we go. Basically an E thirty six. What are we messing about? <laughs> yeah, let's bolt this in then. Yeah, let's find some bolts. So we've done some marking. Yeah. Athletic Jay's turn in that side of the car. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we this, it's not allowing the seat to go down far enough. Um, so you can see we've got some really nice marking going on here that. Also, you well, you probably wouldn't notice, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, the the seat, the rails for the the car are offset. Yeah, basically these <laughs> yeah. do not go straight across the car. They do not. So on this inboard, we're looking at one, two, three, four bolt holes there in, and then on this one, it's three on the outboard. So we're making sure that we've marked everything precisely. Uh, Removal of this metal here should allow the seat to sit back where it was, we hope, i.e. on as, the floor. as low down as it was. And also the clearance here, uh, just here, should allow it to sit further inboard slightly more, which is also what we need. We also need to re we need to drill a new bolt hole for this side. Um, but yeah, I guess just uh, to the bandsaw. To the bandsaw. Here we go then, first bandsaw of the year. I hope my fingers stay on. First on the trick. Minor adjustment. Yeah, one more hole off. I don't think this is going to fit in the box, so. Just <laughs> You're just going to go full danger. Yeah. Don't you get my vision or my Lambo. Yeah. <laughs> Hey. You know what you're doing there, mate? What I might do is put it in the vice this way up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, it's not market too badly. Yeah. Probably needs powder cane anyway, really, doesn't it? Yeah, probably now. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful enough. He's going in. Oh. Oh, in for the 50th time. Help if these wires weren't in the way as well. Oh, oh it's tight. <laughs> that feels different. Why does that feel different? Higher, further back. Bloody seats. I hate seats. And a fussy you are. You have to be fussy. Even everybody's fussy about seats. It's fair. Like, every, even. Even you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
For the next stage, I need to get a little bit more cutty and drilly, so I figured I'd probably better use my own seat. I'm just gonna nip one at the, um, the M3. <laughs> My uh, first uh, Can You Just of 2021. You mean you haven't sent Jay round? Yeah, well he's not here today, is he? He <laughs> no. doesn't work Fridays, does he? <laughs> so yeah, uh, I have cleaned it up, but yeah. if that can be, make sure that that's super straight. So get a nut and do oh, it. That's up. probably a wise idea. It needs uh, a spacer as well. If yeah, you a nut and spacer, yeah. then it'll actually hold it. Always the rocking tunes around here. Yeah, <laughs> some random <laughs> stuff. <laughs> jobs <laughs> I knew it would be um, but yeah it's been so bad I haven't really filmed much um, as I've been progressing throughout the day have finally got somewhere with one side of the brackets though uh, seat bracket so basically oh everything looks wonderful by torchlight <laughs> it looks super crusty in here but uh, still got some final finishing to do essentially this is the the worst point for contact this is where the seat actually physically hits here so getting a bolt in uh, what I've done is I've actually asked Craig to can you just um, TIG weld a countersunk bolt into the bracket itself into the seat rail itself so from the back uh, you can just see let's have a look there you go so that's as flush as can possibly be up against there uh, that bolt hole is perfectly fine all of this I've had to clearance massively because the back of the seat hit it. So I've had to take the bosses down, um, grind them right down to the frame itself, there and there. Um, I've also had to cut, this is this is how much we're talking about millimeters here. Um, I've had to cut away the foam sound insulation and underneath it is a silver foil. I've had to cut that away because the seat actually protrudes even further down here. So what my plan is now is I've just test fitted this for the final time. The seat is perfectly in line with the steering, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, all I'm going to do now is weld this to here. This is the main chassis rail of the car. Didn't really want to do any welding, but I've already done all the grinding, so why not, eh? Uh, I'm basically going to push this down, probably get some professional or slightly more professional welding from a man like Craig, um, buzz that into place. And then essentially that's, uh, I've got a captive nut on this one as well. So that's just TIG welded from the back. But yeah, once that's welded in place, that's essentially done then. I will still be able to take it off if I ever need to because I'll be able to grind down there and the front will still be held on with a bolt. Just need to wash around that. So one side of one rail, done. It's Friday, it's five o'clock. It means it's beer o'clock. So see you on Monday. Welcome back. Happy Monday morning. Yeah. Heat is running. We got our coffee. Yeah. Now it's time to weld Lamborghinis. <laughs> Tack let me, and let me test. Yes. Do you want a mask? Nah, it's alright. I think we'll get Craig to weld this. Sounds pretty horrible, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm sure it's just the... Uh, it's the temperature. The tool behind the tool. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You get in there then and test it out. Monday morning creaking in, in his, uh, on the old uh, middle-aged back. Strong. Yeah, mine still hasn't recovered. 
from yeah, washing been... hands. <laughs> I'm washing your son's hands. <laughs> yeah, it's been a week. <laughs> Look at that. After I left on whatever day it was, thinking this was going to be straightforward, it was basically in. Asking for trouble, if you show any signs of positivity during any part of this progress, it will kick you in the ass. Yeah, this car seems to love a bit of a... a bit of a battle. Right then. Shim in it. Ready to go back in? Or are you just going to eye it up? I think that's, I'll just eye it up, it's fine. Yeah. Okay, so just simply need to make the bracket for this side now. Simply. <laughs> well, at least the seat's held in place. Yeah. Yeah, and it can't wiggle about very far, to be fair, because it's on the floor, it's, the frame's welded, and it's bolted in, so yeah, it can't really do much. Right, let's start chopping the other side up then. Yeah. We've called in reinforcements. <laughs> Real deal. Yeah, what time that is it? If does not hold up, you'll be very annoyed with it in seconds. Right. It's early, this is. <laughs> it's early morning, this It's is. early for Craig, this is. What time is it? I can't even read that. <laughs> ten, before ten, ten. 10. Before 10, he's in the car. He made the mistake of pocket dialing me. Yeah. And then I went, can you just? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Got him before he even opened his building. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, it's over with the wild, so it's it's a bit yeah, difficult, it's a bit, but always going to be a bit crappy. But yeah, that's that actually wilded over wild, but yeah, yeah. it's all right. It's we well, it ain't going anywhere, is it? No, geez, yeah, no. It's all mine, so no, cool. that's the matter. Well. Thank you. Okay, one side of one seat <laughs> finished. Nearly. Uh, so we need to get some proper spreader washers for this of the size that uh, the bosses were that were on the seat originally so they need to like be quite decent size but it's properly solid in already just with one side uh, we've got this roughly placed in place at the moment with some mock-up bolts in place and we're just discussing what we're going to do here so because I've had to chop the mounts off the rail of this rail here we're going to have the mount on this side of the seat frame uh, so basically this will be all cleaned up here and there'll be a plate welded to this bar across the floor and we think it'll probably have two studs poking up out of it then there'll be another plate that sits on top of it and it bolts down and that's the one that's welded and triangulated to um, this side mount here so Jay's just gonna just I've just measured this and Jay's just gonna go and um, cut a plate probably get some bolts poking through from the underside and we might uh, make some clearance holes for the heads of the bolts to go through and weld that to that as our starting point. I found some counter sunk ones so I hope that they hope yep. they go in first I think. Right, right, yeah. Sweet. Ready then? Okay. Remember not to look. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, it's on. Yeah, let's see whether we can actually get it off without snapping those welds in. What are you doing, Jay? Stop putting seats in. <laughs> what day is it, Jay? It's the next Thursday. <laughs> How many days have we been putting seats in, Jay? Solid, about three already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, strong, strong amount of time. Yeah. What a nightmare. They are looking good, but yeah, just some, some little tweaks to... Uh, Make them point straight and be level and have all the clearance that we need, eh? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't really know what we line them up with, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, well, we've leveled the car up at least now, haven't we? And yeah. we've put the interior in, so, or some so of the interior. The so that when I sit in it, I've kind of got a better idea about what I'm doing. Because when you, when you sit in here, before it was really hard to tell sort of what's level and what's not. But I've got some interior in now. Uh, also, I've been working on this, which is... Uh, the standard steering wheel hub, which is like a weird four-bolt four offset thing. 
um, and I've adapted it to have a more standard bolt-on um, adapter for Momos and Personals and Nardis and stuff like that. And I haven't shown you the process of that because it involved welding two things together, one of which was cast and one of which was not. But it's all been done really nicely. I did it on the lathe and then got Craig's expertise when it came to TIG welding and worked out really nice and I am more than happy with it being totally safe. It probably won't snap off. Probably, maybe. <laughs> no, it won't. <laughs> no, it definitely won't. It's, uh, I wouldn't do it unless it was safe. But yeah, it was just, we did have a look at, to see whether it was a similar spline to any of the ones that we carry in stock because we carry, I don't know, probably about 40 different applications of um, steering awesome. hubs. Is it more than that? How many Way is it? more than 40. How many is it then, Starkey? I don't know, a couple hundred. Well, I only, I, you only gave me three to try. What? Is that because of your level of expertise? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's S30, S40. Yeah, nah. We tried Audi and it didn't work, but yeah. anyway, I'm happy with that, but that, that in itself is like half a day's work, and uh, now I've got to decide what steering wheel I want on it. And Starkey, we're not having a Vertex. I can show you which one you're not having. Why? I think Vertex is the best one in the world. Look at that. We're not having that one. That's, no, that's quite a tasteful one. I like that. Yeah, that's tasteful. There's a heater on in there. There's yeah. a heater on in there. Yeah, the 3D printed. printed. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that, quite a nice one. Full vertex, that's tasteful. That's as far <laughs> as I'm going to go with it. <laughs> I am just doing a little test with one of our quick release spacers. It's just a sample base plate, and I've just stolen the steering wheel and shifters from the E30 M3. It's not time for a quick DCT conversion. A quick well, DCT conversion. Ironically. Oh, hang on, isn't that what it has? Yeah. Ironically, my old school E30 M3 has been changed to flappy paddle and my slightly less old school, but not really, flappy paddle Murcielago has been converted into Manuel. So yeah, this steering wheel is obviously just for testing, uh, just literally to see whether, I think this is a 340 mil grinter, which is probably too big, and see whether I can get sort of an idea of uh, distance from the driver's seat and everything like that, and height and driving position. But yeah, it looks too big, doesn't it? You're not gonna see out the windscreen with that. Well, it's uh, too high up, it's, I've gotta set, okay. it, set it first. So I'm just gonna sit in it and see where I can get the angles right. Okay, there we go, that's kind of the driving position. The distance between me and my arms and everything is perfect, but, it looks big, it looks massive really, so uh, yeah, I'm going to find something that's probably a little bit smaller, more like the size of the standard wheel. <laughs> it's identical. Underneath here, <laughs> it's the personal steering wheel, this personal grinter, I think they're like, it might be 340 mil, something like that, but it is identical to the size of the standard steering wheel. So yeah, I don't know what I'm complaining about. It must just be an optical illusion or because I'm not used to seeing a steering wheel in there for a bit. <laughs> but yeah, so I might actually use something like this, obviously without the paddles, but there, that's a separate thing that goes on the back of it. But um, yeah, I really like these wheels and we do carry them in stock too. So I might go and rob the shelves. Oh, look at this for an epic shot. Starkey's gonna do his uh, best shuffle. sales shuffle. <laughs> Excuse the mess. Yes, it's lots of moving around. Yeah, we kind of have run out of space a hundred times over in this building, so stuff gets moved around a lot. Yep. So, steering wheel aisle. We have quite a few. We have a lot. We have probably more Vertex than Japan. <laughs> well, they never have anything in stock, no, and, and it takes them. about bloody eight months every time we place an order. So, yeah. where's Vertex? Here, this All one. the white boxes are Vertex, so we've got oh, a okay. lot of Vertex. Oh, yeah, yeah. Best wheels in the world. How much have you been spending? Too much money. Yeah, damn right. And then HKB buses and everything. Anyway, never mind. Get me my Grinter steering so wheel. You want a personal Grinter? Um, we've got a range. Do you want the Kingston edition, good sir? I probably just want exactly what I've got in yeah. the E30. To be fair, but you could have. You could have. What color is it? Red, yellow, and green stitching. Yeah, it's quite a nice steering wheel. Quite like it. it. Is. Do you want suede or leather? <laughs> Um, oh, that's a, I see, it is a road car, but I do love a suede wheel. I have a suede one, please. Suede. You sure you're not interested in anything else? Mm, I think I've seen them all over the years, haven't I, so. That'd be the one. And can I have it with a blue horn button, like in the E30? Or yes, you can. Yeah. 
We've got those separate there. You could have a Vertex horn button in blue. I'd stop with the Vertex! I just, I just want a personal <laughs> horn button don't, for my don't personal wheel. Don't we all? That one might have to come to you later when I find one. Okay, cool. How much are these, by the way? Not that I'm paying. I don't know. Nice. Genuine. You can find the prices on the Driftworks website. Oh, uh, right. What's the Driftworks website? Driftworks.com. <laughs> and now for our European and American friends, there's no VAT. Oh, lovely. <laughs> But they have to pay duty. Have to pay right? duty. Anna, but that was always Anna the case for America. Yes, it was. Lovely. You may notice some special writing on this socket. <laughs> I had to make a stupid bloody socket for this. I'm sure there's a name for what it actually is, the type of tool it is. But yeah, I didn't have one. Craig didn't have one, so I just made one. An old socket. Seems to work relatively nicely, and I'm sure, despite labelling it clearly, it'll get lost in seconds. So yeah, there we go. One personal Grinter steering wheel. The horn's not pushed in all the way because I've got to do the wiring between the horn and this side of the quick release boss. The other side of the wiring is done, I think. Uh, but yeah, just should just go. He says, click. There we go. One steering wheel. Pretty much fitted. Almost said one seat. That's that is, pretty much fitted that is, though. It's as good as fitted now. Like pretty much a week's work and it's as good as fitted, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, we've just done a lot of work with getting the, the twist of it correct. And we have been working on the level constantly as we've been doing this, but it always looked a little bit off through the Windscreen didn't Yeah, if you looked at the Macaro through the windscreen, it was unacceptable. So. And you know, a man would go, Oh, your Macaro symbol is not very really strong. Yeah, I don't so, yeah, now we're pretty happy with that. It is currently mocked up on our new bracket that we've had to make uh, that comes this way instead of underneath the seat because the seat's so low, there's no clearance for the original um, bolt nut there. So, we're just going to make a shim for that, uh, which is about five, six mil. Do you want to get it? No? Oh, right. oh, go I was going to say, you could wave from inside. Go on then. I'll have to take the steering wheel off though so I can get my belly past it. <laughs> it's still, was it still January? Yeah, but it's January and I'm, I've got a very stressful car to build, so obviously my diet. It's strong. Strong diet. Yeah. But there you go. Hang on. Oh, there we You're talking. <laughs> In terms of a driving position, considering how limited you are with options with this. Yeah, because someone is, put the roof really low yeah, and the and floor really high. The further back you go, the lower the roof gets as well. So it's just a nightmare really. But it's close to my knees here on the shroud that's going to go on the um, column here. But it is great steering wheel driving position, uh, length, distance. A bit too much gangster lean really, but no option because the moment you tip it up, your head's in the, uh, in the roof there. So everything is optimised, literally as best as it possibly can be. Yeah. Um, so we've just got to make it absolutely permanent now. So since you've gone for yellow stitching on the wheel, does that mean the dash is having yellow stitching and the seats are having yellow stitching? Ugh, no. Ah. Oh. Uh, in fact, he's ripped me off. I've just noticed. He's it's starky. No, it's got no yellow centre marker. Oh, perfect. It oh. won't matter for alignment now. That's the best one. <laughs> Jay hates centre markers. I do hate centre markers. Because you have to be quite precise on vehicle. Quite alignment. precise. <laughs> It depends where your head is in the car looking at the thing. I actually quite like it without it, but yeah, because it's know. better. Yeah, I might, I might keep this then. But yeah, pretty much that's it for this episode. So um, yeah, we'll carry on with the torture next week. But this is the end of Jay's week, Thursday, and then we've got probably about an hour's worth of tide. You know, after the mess. I think we have after this week. <laughs> so yeah, we'll probably just finish the passenger side. We won't bother showing you that. Uh, we'll consider this done and then magically it will hit, appear as a perfect interior at one point in the next episode or two. So, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. At Driftworks, we've helped over 50,000 happy customers since 2004. Our huge online parts store is simple to use with superb shipping rates to anywhere in the world and finance options available for UK customers. We live and breathe wheel fitment, so if you have any questions about your own car or any of our products before placing an order, please drop us an email at shop at driftworks.com or give us a call. Thanks for watching.